Hello, and welcome back to the Kerbal Apollo 11 Tribute Mission. After translunar injection, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins spent two days en route to the moon. During this time, they made some unscheduled television transmissions, handled a three-second mid-course correction, and did some housekeeping in the lunar module. The spacecraft entered the moon's vicinity on July 18th, and then on July 19th, three days, three hours, and 49 minutes after the launch of the mission, they ignited the service module propulsion engine for lunar orbit insertion. We rejoined the Kerbals as they too prepared to make their orbit around the moon. Like the Apollo astronauts, they will initially burn into a slightly eccentric orbit and then orbit the moon, then burn again to make a roughly circular orbit. Apollo 11 circularized at a 122 kilometer by 101 kilometer orbit and we expect the Kerbals to aim for a slightly lower orbit, approximately 110 kilometers by 90 kilometers. As with Apollo 11, their target for landing is the Sea of Tranquility, and on entry into the lunar sphere of influence, the Kerbals did a brief service module burn to adjust inclination to aim for that target. Since the lunar orbit insertion burn occurs when Apollo 11 is behind the moon and experiencing an LOS, a loss of signal, with mission control, the command module audio is choppy at best, and the PAO audio is, of course, uh, absent during the lunar orbit insertion burn and in blackout for half of every orbit around the moon. So the audio you will hear will have large gaps omitted and represent the hours between lo lunar orbit insertion and the circularization burn. Apollo 11, this is Houston. All your systems are looking good going around the corner. We'll see you on the other side. Over. Roger. Everything looks okay up here. Roger out. And we've had loss of signal as Apollo 11 goes behind the moon. We were showing a distance to the moon of 309 nautical miles at LOS, velocity 7,664 feet per second. Weight uh, was 96,012 pounds. We're seven minutes, 45 seconds away from the LOI number one burn, which will take place behind the moon, out of communications. Here in the control center, uh, two members of the backup crew, Bill Anders, Jim Lovell, have joined Bruce McCandless at the uh, Capcom console. Now, Fred Hayes, the third member of the backup crew, uh, has just come in, too. And Deke Slayton, director of flight crew operations, is at that console. The viewing room is filling up. Uh, among those we've noticed on the front row in the viewing room uh, are astronauts Tom Stafford, John Glenn, Gene Cernan, Dave Scott, Al Worden, and Jack Swigert. With a good uh, lunar orbit insertion burn, the Madrid station should acquire Apollo 11. At 76 hours, 15 minutes, 29 seconds. Acquisition time for no burn, 76 hours, 5 minutes, 30 seconds. You uh, start by the EMS, set up the way you want Yeah, I got to go to my arm with 35. And then for the upper seat on the menu
watch the go gray, right, and the ball belt. This is Apollo Control at 75 hours, 49 minutes. Apollo 11 should have started uh, this long burn. Three Duration, six minutes, two seconds. Delta B, 2,917 feet per second. Given that burn, we expect uh, an orbit of 61 by 169.2 nautical miles. Okay, here we go. Back and forth. I'm predicting 558. Okay. 
four seconds early.
a minute and a half away from uh, acquisition time. Thirty seconds. Madrid AOS. Madrid AOS. Telemetry indicates that the crew is working on the antenna angles to uh, bring the high gain antenna to bear. Houston, over. Go ahead. Uh, 11, 
Houston, during your SPS burn as uh, played back uh, on tape down here, we've observed the nitrogen tank Bravo pressure in the SPS system dropping a little bit more than we anticipated. Uh, it's holding steady right now. Uh, we'll continue to watch it and keep you posted if anything comes up. Over. All right, thank you. All right, and it has held We're steady. We're going over Mass Column, Mass. Okay, yeah, Boot Hill, Duke Island, uh, Sidewinder, looking at Mass Column W, that's the ER around uh, checkpoint. And uh, just coming into the Terminator. At, uh, at the Terminator, it's uh, ash and gray. Uh, as you get farther away from the Terminator, it gets to be a lighter gray, and as you get closer to uh, the subsolar point, uh, you can definitely see browns and tans in the ground. Pretty to uh, to follow live by observation, anyway. Roger, 11. We're recording your comments for posterity. 